Hi, welcome to this series of tutorials on series. And in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is look at extending the work that we've tackled in the past on sigma notation. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with this, but just to recap that when we have this sign, the sigma sign, and it's got R going from 1 to N for R. It's short for saying that we're going to sum the series R equaling 1. And then we increase that by one more. So it's now 2. And then we increase it to 3 and so on. All the way up until we get to N. So in other words, if we had something like this. Sigma, let's just write that in sigma are going from 1 to 3, then this would be short for saying I want to sum up r equaling 1 plus 2 plus 3. In other words, that comes to a total of 6. And we're not just restricted to summing series where r goes from 1 to 3. We could sum it uh, from another starting value of r. Let's suppose we had r equaling, say, 3 to 5. Then this would mean that when r is 3, we'd start with 3. Then r goes to 4, so we'd add 4. And then when r is 5, we finish on that term. So clearly with something like this, we've got a total of 12. Now this particular summation, r going from 1 to n, which gives us this series here, is something that we should be familiar with. It's an arithmetic series. Let's just put that down here, an arithmetic series. And I had tutorials on this particular series uh, earlier. So if you're unfamiliar with this one, you can always look it up on my website. And we found out that the sum of the first n terms denoted by Sn always equaled the number of terms n divided by 2 multiplied by the first term, let's call it a, plus the last term, let's call it l. So in other words, for something like this, if there's n terms and the first term a is 1, the last term is n, then the sum of the first n terms is going to be n over 2, 1 plus n. So if we get this series here, sum of r going from 1 to n, it's going to be n over 2, n plus 1. I know I said 1 plus n here, which it is, but obviously you can turn it around like this. And you'll often see this printed out in formula books or tables. Now you can see this works here because in this example n equals 3. So when we put n equals 3 in here and here, 3 add 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Divided by 2 you get 6, the answer we had. So this is going to be very useful then when n is a very big number that we can't sum it up just visually like this. Okay, so that's one that you need to try and remember. Now we can take this further. We can look at linear combinations of this summation. So for instance, let's suppose we were looking at the sum, let's mark that in, the sum of r going from 1 to say 3 of a function of r a linear function, 2r minus 1 say, then what's this going to equal? Well we start with r equaling 1, so I'm going to write it out uh, in quite a long form here just so that you can see what's going on. But r is 1, so it's going to be 2 multiplied by 1 and then minus that 1 there and that will be the first term. And to that we need to add our second term, which will be when r equals 2. So we'd have 2 multiplied by 2 and then minus 1. And finally, when r equals 3, we get our third term, which is going to be 2 multiplied by 3 minus 1. 
So what does this come to? Well, the first term is going to be 1, second term here is going to be 3, and the third term is going to be 5. And if you add that up, you get 9. So what I want to look at is what happens in general when we have to do the sum then of a series like this, R going from 1 to N, of something where we've got a constant, let's call it A, times R, plus another constant, let's call it B. So we've got something like this. Well, the first term then is going to be when R is 1, so it's just going to be simply A plus B. So let's just put that down as A plus B. Then for the second term, when R is 2, that's going to be 2A plus B and so on. The third term would be 3a plus b. And if we carried this on till the nth term, then the nth term is going to be na plus b. Now if we just look at the terms consisting of a, then I could pull that out as a common factor. I can see that I've got a as that common factor and I've got 1a here. And for this term here, I've got 2 a's, so it's plus 2, and then plus 3 a's, plus 3, and so on, all the way up to plus n a's, so we'll just put plus n there. And then for the b's, can you see that I've got the first b, and then the b in the second term, and then in the third term, and so on, all the way up to the nth term. So we'll just put that there. So what does this simplify to? Well, we've got A, and then this particular series here, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to N, is given by sigma R going from 1 to N. So I can write this in then as sigma okay, R going from 1 to n of r. So that's that chunk there. And for this one, well, can you see that I've got b written down n times? So we can just think of this as being sigma of b, okay, with r going from 1 to n. In other words, I write b down n times. Now, this is a common result. And we should know that if I was to sum b n times, then it's going to be nb. And so we get this result up here, that if I've got the summation of a constant, in this case b, r going from 1 to n, it's going to be nb. Okay, so when it comes to this result here, I can simplify this term and get this general result. That if I've got anything of the form ar plus b, a linear term here, and I sum it from r going from 1 to n, it's the same as a times sigma r going from r equals 1 to n, plus essentially nb, this term on the end. Okay. And why would this be useful? How can I use it? Well, if, for instance, I was to check out this a formula for this, I mean, I've just summed it from 1 to 3, but suppose I was wanting to find a formula that summed it from 1 to n, then I could call upon this result here. So let's just show you how that's going to work. So we we'll just come down here. And let's suppose then we have our summation r going from 1 to n of this series here, 2r minus 1. Well, you can see that the a value, I hope, is going to be the 2. And the b value here is going to be minus 1. I'm adding minus 1. 
So according to this rule up here, I can pull out the two in front of the sigma sign. We've got r going from 1 to n and then it's just going to be simply sigma r. And then I've got minus the 1 which occurs n times. So in other words I've got n times 1. This result here. So all I need to do now is just simplify this. I've got 2 times sigma r. We know the answer to sigma r. It's up here. It's going to be n over 2 multiplied by n plus 1. Then I've got the last term here which is really minus n. Now these two twos cancel one another out just leaving me with n multiplied by that bracket. So we can then say that this is going to be n times n which is n squared, n times the 1 which is plus n and then minus this n here. And clearly you can see that these two n's cancel just leaving me with n squared. So this gives me a general formula then for summing this particular series up to n terms. It equals n squared. Now I can check this out in this example here when n was equal to 3. So let's just put when n equals 3. When n equals 3 we've got then the summation of r going from 1 to 3 of 2r minus 1. Well according to the formula here it should be n squared. In other words 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 was the answer we got. So obviously this kind of idea is going to be really useful when n is much bigger than 3 when we've obviously got lots of terms that we can't really physically add up by sight. So this is just an introduction then of how we can use this formula and use the results that we've got up here okay, to sum linear functions of R. OK, well I'm going to be doing more videos in this series where we look at not only just this particular summation but we're going to look at the sum of R squareds and R cubes and then start to combine those summations. So for now that brings us anyway to the end of this particular video in this series.